26 district qualifiers, five past champs, top finishers from last year, the NCAA long driving champion and the homestanding Bahamas long driving champion. I'm sure you at home are going to be interested as I am to see how these grassroots hopefuls, including a dental student, a carpenter, a truck driver, and an assistant DA make out. We should see some pretty exciting action early in the quarters, Nick. This tailwind could put that Peterbilt truck at the end of the grid in jeopardy. All right, trying to take advantage of that breeze at the back in the first group is colorful Dave Maneri. Big one. Big one. Big one. Maneri was a semi-finalist in 1987. Dave could catch a big wave back to the semis if he can hit a big drive downwind. There it is! Oh, there it is. Sweetheart. Hello. That's straight, and it's oh, right huge. in the middle. Awesome. Nick, that is awesome. It's like an inside-the-park home run, the way they're chasing Dave, the big wave. Which? Which? 340, 348 yards, 348 yards, two feet, four inches. These long drivers all compete with the same unmarked balls, but uh, that might have been a hot one. Now here's Greg Maycock, the Bahamas champion, son of a customs officer, and he's got a target to shoot at. He gets a better bounce. He's got a big bounce. Look at this. Oh, that's terrific. The Bahamian champion comes here. Wait till they hear this distance. This crowd is going to go nuts. That was approximately 335 yards. That will put local favorite Maycock in the semifinals. Trying to join Maneri and Maycock in the semis is 1987 champion Mike Gordon. Mike's strength is consistency. As defending champion last year, he was the leading qualifier in the semis. He'd love to have that chance again. Gordon. Very impressive. Nick, these long drivers are impressing everyone here in the quarterfinal. Thank you. 335 yards. Surprise visitor here at the long drive. One of the great short hitters of our time, Doug Sanders. Nick, I've never seen anything as awesome as they have here. This is unreal, and they got some good swings as, uh, as well. I notice you're stealing some of the balls here. What do you have in mind? Well, I took one of these things out while I go. I thought, May, it might be magic to see if I could hit it any further, but I can still only get 230. <laughs> That's with a lot of roll. <laughs> Thanks, Doug. Even defending champion Jim Maynard, who's exempt into the semis, is impressed with the action so far. <clears throat> some other former champions were less impressive. Here's the 1984 winner, Wedgie Winchester, the trick shot artist, sporting his funny-looking extra-long driver. <laughs> right down the middle. Nothing too funny about that. Ooh, it doesn't look long enough, Nick. No, Wedgie didn't win his group or qualify with one of the six longest non-winning drives. And also failing to advance was two-time champion Andy Franks. There it is. Oh, wow, four balls out of play. This is a big upset. Andy is the only player to have won the title, lost it, and won it back. Boy, he's got to be disappointed. 1980 champion Scott DeCandia did advance as a qualifier. He led the group of six competitors who didn't win their foursomes but still qualified for the semifinals. That's nice. Good hit, little draw. Long, left side. All depends on the band. Here it is. She's rolling now. She's rolling. She's up around three, three thirty-seven. Wow, look at these distances, Nick. That was 337 yards. The candy is 337 yard effort was not good enough to win his foursome because he went up against Dave Maneri in the first group and Dave's remarkable 348 yard plus blast, the longest of all nine winning drives. That first group fared best in the quarter. Everyone qualified. Joining Maneri and DeCandia in the semis will be George Slupsky and John Hansen. When we return. 
All right, Big Cat, we're all the way down to the semifinals now. 24 combatants left. We've got 15 top finishers from our first round. Joining the fun here now, the top six long drivers off the PGA Tour stats list, and the best three from last year's championship. And we're going to take those 24 players and divide them into six four-man groups. In order to advance into the finals, a, a competitor's going to have to win his group or have one of the top two drives that does not win a group. We start fresh every round. What do you see for the semis? Well, I was very impressed in the quarterfinals. Out of 36 competitors, only three missed the grid. Uh, the most memorable shot, of course, Dave Maneri's 348-plus yard blast. I'm looking forward to see if uh, Dave can duplicate that feat and move on to the final. The PGA Tour created the big surprise of the semis. Ed Humanick surprised even himself with a drive 33 yards longer than his tour-leading average. Another tour player, Ronnie McCann, also had a few surprises up his sleeve. His attempt to tee it up from the ladies' tees to get a few extra yards failed, but he qualified to, for the finals with the shortest winning drive of any group, 283 yards, 20 inches. I guess that's appropriate for our shortest competitor. Making the best showing in the semis from the PGA Tour was first-year player David Jackson. David had a rough rookie season, 201st on the money list, so he can use money here. I think his lack of experience has something to do with that, Nick. Yeah, still no cheap substitutes for experience, Evan. I think the veterans will do better than those here for the first time. Well, David Jackson had no problem with his first visit to the Bahamas, a 316-yard drive. David Jackson, the PGA Tour pros, have pulled off a couple early upsets here in the semifinals. Well, uh, Ronnie McCann, he was sort of my inspiration. I saw him advance in round two, and so I figured, you know, I had to try to keep pace with Ronnie. What's the adjustment here for a tour player coming in with these gorillas? Oh, I don't know. I think everybody just gets up there and, you know, tries to get a pretty good one in early, which I was fortunate to do, and then you can really go at the, at the last couple. And, you know, I just strengthen my grip a little bit, and, but I don't alter my swing a whole lot. Good luck the rest of the way. Thank you. Next up, second-year competitor Dirk Schultz. Dirk made it to the semis last year, but then he didn't get a ball in play. He's looking to break into the finals this year. Oh, he hit this one. This stays in. It's tailing it's right left. Right on the line. He needs a bounce. He might hit the tower out there. Well, if it hits it and comes back in, that's kosher. It did. How about What a break. <laughs> what a break. Just short of 330. Might have propelled him a little forward, too. 328 yards and 12 inches. The driving range employee from Hagerstown, Maryland, 6'6", six, six, Dirk Schultz, gets a break of some proportions. Well, I wouldn't want to be the guy in that tower. Up there. Anybody hurt? One of the most consistent competitors in the long drive competition is crowd pleaser Bobby Wilson. Bobby has eight top ten finishes to his credit, but no championships. He does have the distinction of being a member of the 1980 U.S. Olympic handball team. Now, that's a sport that takes a lot of hand-eye coordination, huh, Nick? Well, let's see if Mr. Consistency can get off a big one here. Boy, does it every year. Great tee shot. You like him steady, you like Bobby Look Wilson. A good bounce. 315 yards. Just dead solid, solid, Bobby Wilson. Salad is a good way to describe Art Salinger, the 1986 champion. Art has all the characteristics that could allow him to capture the title again. Aggressiveness, strength, and experience. <laughs> Especially aggressiveness. That, that makes my back hurt. And what timing? After hitting his first three balls out of play, he comes through in a clutch. Down the left side. Almost 320, Evan. Yeah, that's the second longest drive in the semis, right behind Dirk Schultz. Art Sellinger, a past champion, was down to his last swing, but you just needed one. Well, I'll tell you, uh, it's always been just one in for me. I don't know what, what's going on here, but uh, I'm glad it happened. I made it. I made a real good swing. I kept it down the middle. I just told myself to stay down, stay behind the golf ball, and, and it happened. I looked at the board. I finally really needed 307 as an alternate, and I figured I could, I'm capable of hitting it 307 yards and stood within myself, and I brought it home on the last ball. Unable to bring it home in the semifinals was the monster of the quarterfinals, 
big wave Dave Maneri, his strategy of hit it and hope backfired. Oh, no. Well, big wave Dave was all dried out in the semi. He hit all four balls out of play. Also falling to the pressure of matching his past performance was Jim Maynard, last year's winner. Defending isn't easy on a competitor or his wife. Jim's had trouble finding the fairway this year. Boy, the, boy, the pressure was really on Jim's last ball there. I know it's, it's a real anxiety kind of feeling to be up there with one more tee shot. <clears throat> but only 303 yards. That wasn't enough to win his group. One of the two players who didn't win their group but advanced was Scott Sicandia. He made it to the semis by hitting the longest qualifying drive in the quarters, 336 yards, 32 inches. Oh, he got his position there. A lot of upper body in that swing. He's happy. It looks good. It's out there. It's rolling. Just over 310 yards. And that'll be enough to qualify Scott for the finals. Dirk Schultz got the break he needed to advance into the finals, but the big news at the semis was that three tour pros also made it. And Scotty DeCandia keeps moving along, qualifying once again. We'll be back with more from the Bahamas in a moment. You know what? My dad bought me a new car. So did mine. My dad got a V8. My dad got a V12. My dad got a Stanley. My dad got a convertible. My dad got a CD player. My dad got a, a car for me. My dad got Michelin. Michelin? Well, my mom's prettier than your mom. Michelin, because so much is riding on your tires. The country Columbus discovered is one of democracy. Laws. Family. Tradition, history, and above all, people. Now more than ever. Wendell did it. Ed Bird did it. Ralph and Zeelander did it too. They all won the Australian Open. So see who does it this year. ESPN brings you the 1990s first Grand Slam tournament. Seven days of fantastic tennis, including the men's and women's finals. Coverage starts Sunday night at 7.30 Eastern, live only on ESPN. The Bahamas Princess Resort and Casino claims two of the three golf courses on Grand Bahama Island, and they are both jewels. The Ruby course winds its way through a lush forest. It's a wonder they found a hole straight enough to host this year's National Long Driving Championship. The zigzagging design is protected by water and sand. In 1988, the Bahamas was named an official world golf destination by the PGA Tour. Each course now reaches the Tour's tough standards on turf management. Both Prince's courses, the Ruby and the Emerald, surpass visitors' expectations. The Emerald is a tricky 6,700-yard Dick Wilson layout. There are only four par fours measuring over 400 yards. The shortest is the 324-yard fifth, which demands accuracy off the tee and approaching the green. But even long drivers are challenged by the Emerald. The 532-yard par 5 ninth with its double dog leg and greenside hazards is truly a test. The charm of golf in the Bahamas is the natural beauty. With the holes cut from the forest, foursomes rarely see each other, and that's the way they like it. There's another golfing gem on Grand Bahama Island, the Lucaya Country Club, another masterful design by Dick Wilson. Lucaya, owned by the Atlantic Beach Hotel, hosted the National Long Drive's Pro-Am along with the Princess. 75 deep white sand bunkers grace this deceptively tight track where target golf is at a premium. If your aim is better at night, Freeport is the place to be a winner.
If you are called to the sea for fun in the sun, look no further than the Bahamas. Bahamas is exotic, but then long drivers often find themselves in exotic, out-of-the-way places. Well, the craziest place my drive ever ended up uh, was when I was in a championship round up in Palo Alto Hills on the 18th hole, even going into that hole, and I, it was a par five, and I was trying to hit it uh, really long and straight so I could get home in two. I hit a ball on the other fairway in 400 yards, another group was coming forward, and it flew into the basket into their cart. I hit it so far right, everybody knew it was out of bounds, but we just wanted to check to make sure. And as we got about halfway to where we thought it was, a whole procession of people came out in tuxedos. Hit my drive, it hit a tee marker two yards in front of me, came back and knocked me out. At this time, I realized there was a wedding party going on. I looked over, there was a lady who had her leg up with some ice on it. Apparently, she was the mother of the bride. The ball careened off of the brick cement hit her in the ankle and rolled back in bounds by about two inches. I said, well, I think I hit it pretty good. I don't think it's in the tree. So we looked a little while longer and couldn't find it, so I started back to the tee, and the ball shakes loose out of one of the trees, hits me in the head, and drops down, and I identify it as my ball, and they said, the ball hitting you is a two-shot penalty, so I found it, but I lied three in the tree. The people were really upset. They really thought that uh, it was an errant tee shot, and I kind of really had spoiled the reception. I hit a tee shot, hit it right uh, over the group of condominiums that uh, was my target area, but the ball seemed to drop out of the air a little quickly. When it did, I heard a pound. This was about 10 o'clock on a Sunday morning. All of a sudden, the silence was broken in Wild Dunes, South Carolina, when the burglar alarm went off on the condominium that I had just struck. I had to play the shot anyway with about 150 people breathing down my neck, really upset. I hit an eight iron on, made the putt, and ended up winning the match, one up. I-35 uh, north to Kansas City runs bes right beside our second hoe, and uh, I hit a tee shot one time, uh, got in the back of the truck, went 324 miles, and they mailed it back to me from Kansas City. So that's really the craziest shot I ever hit that ended up in one of the most uh, unusual situations. Behind every popular golf event anymore, there's a worthy cause, and in this case, it's junior golf. Over the 15 years of the long drive, we've presented $500,000 to the PGA's Junior Golf Foundation, and to add to that figure, Mr. Tom Ryan from Michelin has something for Greg Shreves, representing the PGA of America. Thank you, Nick. As you know, this is the third year of sponsorship for the Michelin Tire Corporation, and we're very proud and pleased to present this check for nearly $50,000 to Greg for the furtherance of junior golf, a cause we believe in. Tom, on behalf of the PGA of America and its nearly 17,000 members and apprentices, we appreciate your continued support of junior golf. Thanks so much. Thank you, Greg. Thanks, gentlemen. We'll be back with the final after this. Peter A perfect balance of form and function that rules the open highways with a touch of glass. A distinctive celebration of performance, style, and spirit. Peterville. The country Columbus discovered is one of democracy. Laws. Family. Tradition, history, and above all, people. Now more than ever. Save your dough. For a limited time, Domino's Pizza has a New Year's deal. Two pizzas each with one topping for only $10.95. So call Domino's Pizza on the double. Nobody delivers better. Offer may vary. Beauty. Excitement. 
adventure. All these and more can be yours in the wonderful world of art. And with this art test from Art Instruction School, you can find out if you have the interest and desire needed to become a serious art student. So to get your free art test without cost or obligation, call this toll-free number now. Call 1-800-633-3400. That's 1-800-633-3400. <laughs> Good show. Thank you. So Ronnie McCann is on the board, and that's important because he's going to beat all the competitors that don't hit the grid here today. Second up in the finals, a dental student at the University of Washington who hit it 301 yards in the semis, Rad Lucas. Rad says, uh, having hooked that one way out of play, he says the toughest part about competing in this long driving business is getting out of class. That's not encouraged when you're a fourth year <laughs> dental student. Yeah, he looks a little nervous here too, Nick. I thought I saw his hand shaking there a little bit, Evan. That's not un uncommon here with these long drivers. So you don't want those hands shaking when he starts practicing dentistry. And I'm in the chair. Well, he's 0 for 2. Brad Lucas is a one handicapper, and uh, before he practices dentistry, when he gets his degree, he says he wants to turn pro and hopes to be able to try the PGA Tour, Evan. Well, I wonder if his idol is Dr. Carrie Middlecoff. <laughs> Two-time U.S. Open champion. He wouldn't be a bad idol. Too easy to forget, Carrie. Yeah. Out, out to the right there. He's only got one, net, one ball left now, Nick. Well, he's compensated and overcompensated, and the, the tension level now has to be pretty severe. Yeah, it's a tough position to be in. He's uh, not used to this kind of attention. Fourth and final swing for Red Lucas, and the ball's headed wide again, Evan. Uh, I think that's a little bit of inexperience. Finals favors a driver with experience. Somebody who's been there before. 1980 champion Scott DeCandia. First in 1980, third in 79, fourth in 84, fifth in 85. He's just about hit for the cycle on this national long drive. On his honeymoon, Scotty DeCandia from Bedford Hills, New York. First ball in the final. Hit it hard, but out left. Comparatively, I think the... Uh, wind into him won't hurt him as much as the others. He's probably a better low hooker of a golf ball, isn't he, than anybody else in the finals here. If everybody hits their best shot, this is your winner. Only one past champion has has lost the title and regained it. That was Andy Franks, one in 79 and 82. Scott yeah. trying to do that. There's a big tee shot. The splenetic effort. Oh, this is, and it's in the right spot in the fairway. Down the left center. Farmer down that side. He's trying right not to smile. <laughs> Just short of 330. Boy, this puts the pressure on the guys to follow. <laughs> nice wedding present. 327 yards. No one ever questions that he could hit it far. It was could he hit it straight. It's not a pretty swing, but it's practical. He's done it in the quarters the semis, and now in the finals. And he hit it into the wind with a wood head and a shaft that's only 42 and a half inches long. And that's shorter than standard. That's not shorter than normal, but it's too far left, Evan. Well, Scott candy is what people expect a long driver to look like. Big upper body, strong forearms, former All-American shaft putter through the shot put right-handed to build up his left side. He'd, uh, in the summertime, swing a sledgehammer. That's a good that shirt tail has no chance with this man swinging a golf club. That's a, good uh, that's a great effort for Scotty. He puts a big number on the board. Boy, that's going to put the pressure on the rest of the field. <laughs> So we got 27, 14 and a half. 327 yards and 14 and a half inches. Scotty, you've given him one to shoot at. Yeah. Well, it's kind of early in the competition. It's uh, 
if the wind changes, then they'll, uh, you know, some big numbers will come up. Hopefully I gave them, like the last time I won, something to go for. You're on your honeymoon, having a good week down here. <laughs> no comment. <laughs> <laughs> well, hope that that number holds. Thank good you luck. Very much. Thank you. Our fourth finalist, Ed Humanick, led the PGA Tour, averaging more than 280 yards off the tee. But it wasn't into the wind, Evan. So here's his first ball in the finals. <laughs> All they want to do is beat Ronnie. <laughs> we've seen that distances diminish here from the first round to the semis to what we've seen so far in the final. Yeah, the conditions have changed. Uh, quarter five, early in the quarterfinals, the wind was directly behind. It was warm. Time's gone on. The healer. Now we're down just shy of the 280-yard marker. Good tour grass. Only got to find about 49 more yards. They don't sell that at the pro shop here at the Ruby course. That's pretty good here. Good ball, good draw. The tour pros tend to be more consistent, obviously, but it's hard for them to reach back and come up with that extra 30 yards. That was 309. Ed Humanick. He's been saving this one, I think. Ed might be a little bit out of his league here, but he does have a chance of becoming the only player since the quarters to get all four balls in play. That hard. He really went at that. Four in play. That's no small accomplishment at this phase. And he's having some fun. Very good. And a good yardage. 308 is long. It is. Into some breeze. Sea level. 330 is huge at sea level. I'm here with Ed Humanick, the tour's leading long driver. He just put four in play right in a row. You, your strategy a little bit different in the long drive than it is on tour? Uh, yeah, a little bit. Out here, um, it's just hit it as far as you can. Uh, and on tour, we only, we use two holes. So you pretty much, with the stats there, you're just trying to make sure you hit it real solid to get it out there a long ways. But out here, it's just trying to swing as hard as you can. And, and keep it in a 40-yard fairway. We're out on tour. We can hit it pretty wherever we want, and we'll still get it measured. Well, everybody back in Michigan is real proud. He did a great job. Thank you. We'll be back with the top four qualifiers from the semifinals when the long drive finals continues. Third, second, second, the last three years. I'm confident he'll be back up there again this year. The pride of Sherwood, Arkansas, has three balls left. Asked him about strategy, and he says it's not so much a question of strategy at this stage, it's just a question of getting the adrenaline pumping at just the right moment. Well, he's been pretty good at getting the adrenaline going at the right time the past few years. Come here. Pretty high, come here. coming back. High and right. High and right. a little over 300. I don't think Bobby quite got there. You can tell by his reaction. You can say you pop up a 300-yard grind. It looked to be a little popped up. That puts him in third position. Bobby's all too used to being a bridesmaid. Maybe this is the year he'll catch the bouquet. Third drive for Bobby Wilson. Yeah. He got this one. Nick, he hit this one. My back hurts. He needs he needs a good roll. Go, go, go. 
not quite good enough. Crowd's trying to urge it on out there. Awfully well struck, Paul. Watch it. He just does it time and time again. 315, the same as he hit in the semis to get here to the final. Well, that moves him into second position, too, and it's important to finish in the top three here because if you do that, you're exempt for the finals the following year. You're back next year. That's how he got here this year and last year and the time before that. Bobby Wilson. Well, down the right side, Nick. That's going to be in, but I don't think it's going to be good enough. Same old story for Bobby Wilson. A couple of really good drives, but still no title. Bobby Wilson, you put some good swings on it. They felt good. Uh, that second one I hit, uh, or the third ball, I guess, I hit. I really thought it'd go a little bit further than 316, but, you know, I'm happy with what I got. You always show up well here. It's just that somebody always seems to put a big one out there past you at the, at the end. They do, and, uh, you know, again, fate pays, plays a part in it, and uh, I thought it really good. I still thought it was going to be my turn this year, and uh, I'm still not unhappy right now. Mr. Consistency, Bobby Wilson. Hoping this might be his year and his first try is tour player David Jackson. He got to the finals with a drive of 317 yards. Yeah, well, that looks a little bit left. Was he a bit hasty with that swing, Evan? Yeah, was, uh, a little quick there. It shows you even the tour player can get out of whack once in a while. Well, maybe David should take a lesson from Ronnie McCann, although he's uh, nearly a foot taller than Ronnie. He had different body types, and that extra height uh, gives him a lot more leverage, a lot more potential to develop club head speed. Club is traveling at greater distance. Yeah. It's a good tee shot if it stays in. Down the left side. That should stay in. Look at that run. Look at that sucker run. See what I mean about your running over here? It, it's inbounds about 312 yards. That looks like it's good enough to edge past Eddie Humanick, but not good enough to get him into the top three. He got a long drive. He uses two drivers, so this is one that he plays with, and he has a 47-inch driver. That looks like the 47 inch. This is good here. He caught that one. It's fading some. David won an MCI long drive contest on tour this year with a big hit of 328 yards, so he is capable of hitting a large one in his last attempt. around the country happy <laughs> see a tour player do that scott the candy is a little happier now that he has just two men to beat i'm here with david jackson how hard is, is it to, to look at it and have to hit a drive 327 yards it makes it pretty tough you know when a guy comes out and hits one that long early that's why i went to my what i call my super long driver that i hit about 100 yards on my fourth ball but i felt like i had to hit something like that just to have a chance Currently, you're in third position, and if you stay there, that gets you back here next year. Well, I'd like that. This has been a lot of fun. Thank you. Thank you. Next up, 1986 champion Art Sullinger, who looks like a man rushing to catch a bus here. Wow. Oh, man. Art didn't wait to hit a big one. That's out there. High into the wind, but it's still going over. Looks like over 320, and he's got three balls to go. Uh, there's Scotty over there all by himself with his thoughts. He can't play offense anymore. Lonely in the lead. He's 100 yards back of the tee. I'm not even sure he can see what his competitors are doing here. Second ball for Art Sellinger. That's good if it's not too far left. Yeah, he's got to find another uh, five yards. <laughs> you don't necessarily have to swing at it any harder. What you do is put the same swing on it and maybe get a little better bounce. But you got to get it inside that grid in order for it to count. Just 
trying to go at it a little bit too hard. Couldn't get it finished. You know, it's tough uh, for these guys to come back and regain a title like Scott DeCandy is trying to do. Uh, it's kind of like the heavyweight division in boxing. The Floyd Patterson and Muhammad Ali are the only two heavyweight boxers ever to lose a title and then come back and win it back. Well, that analogy isn't so stressed because we got a lot of heavyweights in this contest. Art goes 6'3", 240, and he's about in the middle of the pack. Dead left. Well, he's got to be a little bit disappointed. His I first ball in, he's got three free swings at it and uh, doesn't quite get up there. But finishing second's not too bad, especially when you have to hit it into a slight breeze. Art, it's tough to win this thing twice. Yes, it is. Um, Scotty hit a good ball. I, I didn't catch one. Hit that ball 322. I did my goal. I hit the first one in a fairway, and I thought I'd put up a decent number and then go and didn't really make a good swing after that, but uh, pretty good showing. Good going. Thank you. And then there was one. The only man who can catch Scott DeCandy is the longest qualifier in the semifinals, Dirk Schultz from Hagerstown, Maryland. Oh. Former basketball player at Shippensburg University. Qualified with a distance of 350, so you know that's if the time's right, he can get it out there far enough. Works at a driving range. Wide stance. Reaches for it. Oh, oh yeah. yeah! Right down the middle. Is it long enough? It's only straight and far. Eddie DeCandy had cringed on that. Oh, yes. 312 yards for Dirk Schultz. Third drive for the 24-year-old amateur. Boy, he's got to be feeling the pressure. Oh, it's this hard, too. That's clear and right down down the line. Cleared a couple of clouds. Just missed that tower again. He's going for that tower. Yeah. One to go. Maybe he'll just play for the tower. 315 yards for Schultz on his third attempt. And now there's one swing left in the 1989 National Long Driving Championship. It's either going to be Dirk Schultz or Scotty DeCandia with his second title. He didn't flinch. Could be right aside. Scott DeCandia. Scotty DeCandia. Second title on his honeymoon. And we'll be back to talk with our 1989 Michelin National Long Driving Champion in just a moment. He's the third man ever to win two National Long Driving Championships. Art Selinger had to settle for $8,000 second place money. And although Rad Lucas failed to get a ball in play, he picked up $950. Scotty DeCandy, our 1989 National Long Driving Champion. <laughs> to the victor, G. David Firm, the publisher of Golf Digest, has a nice piece of uh, crystal wear for you here. Scott? First of all, congratulations. Golf Digest has been proud to present this 15, or rather conduct this 15th annual National Long Drive Contest. It's been a long road to get here, over 150 different sites with over 10,000 contestants to get here in the Bahamas. We'd like to thank the people here at the Princess, our support sponsors, MCI and Peterbilt, and indeed this is the longest running grassroots competition in golf, of which Michelin has been just a great sponsor. On behalf of all of them, congratulations. Thank you. Thank you very much. And a man who's collected 462 tips for hitting the ball farther this week, Mr. Tom Ryan, the main man at Michelin, has the more spendable part of the spoils for you here, Scotty. Thank you, Nick. It is Michelin's third year of sponsorship, and we are indeed proud. Earlier in the week, we had the opportunity to present a check to Junior